When you're a high profile chef, some diners expect you to be inventive, while others prefer to be served the classic dishes they know and love. It's a tricky balancing act, but chef Dion Vengatas is a master of the art of taking traditional recipes, then reinventing them in subtle ways, which is what I watched him do with a Mediterranean inspired menu. Stand by for something special. Thousands of kilometers separate the shores of the Mediterranean from the slopes of Table Mountain. But Chef Dion Vengadez can conjure away the distance with a magic menu. When I think Mediterranean, I think of the sun and dancing, gorgeous people and delicious food. Well, today on Mela, I've got two of those things covered as I'm about to cook with Chef Dion Vengatas. Dion, what are we doing today? Hello. <laughs> It's all about Mediterranean food today. Ah. Fresh, crisp, clean, lively, all up in your face. Beautiful. I'm keen, let's do it. You're going to make it to bulle salad. Very simple, clean flavors that are just all mixed together, but very fresh and sort of vibrant and lemony and zesty. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a Greek lamb with some flavors that come from Turkish and around those areas. But it's a nice slow baked lamb neck that we bake in yogurt and salt, it's quite phenomenal. And then for dessert, we're going to Italy and we're doing a ricotta dessert with a bit of macerated dates and some honey. So I also mix a bit of Middle Eastern in as well to give that bit of uh, ricotta lift and some flair. Bellissimo, so we are traveling together today. Let's do it. Okay, let's do this. Traditionally, we use bulgur wheat inside. Mm -hmm. I try to keep the entire salad gluten-free, so okay. I use millet. It's a pulse that I've just boiled and then salted the water lightly until it sort of swells up completely. Does that mean it's a protein if it's a pulse? Yes. Okay. So what you want to do with your millet, the main ingredients in it is all the others. Okay. And then the bulgur wheat or millet, as I'm using in this case, uh -huh. literally just sticks to all the ingredients uh, that you okay, add to okay. it. We've got some coriander freshly chopped, mm, a lot mm. of herbs in this here. It's basically like a herb and tomato salad. Mm. All the tomatoes. Look at those colours. If you do have a lot of tomatoes in season, you have various types that they all have different sort of layers of flavor. Some are acidic, some are like plum, some are like eating an apple, literally. Try to use as many various different types of tomatoes as possible. Cucumber, I like the crunch that it offers in it, watery sort of crisp, fresh texture as well. Some of the diced red onion, but I've lightly salted them as well, so it brings out more of that pungent onion flavor. Mint, again, lots of herbs, mm -hmm. and then your parsley which has been chiffonade. Yes, yeah, chiffonade. Chiffonade. <laughs> <laughs> just to give it a taste and see that we're on the right track, that there's not too much of everything, the millet is just sort of clinging to each of the ingredients and not the main ingredient inside. Green onion, scallions or spring onion, whichever you like, all the same, just different words. Just in terms of your seasoning, I've taken a bit of smoked paprika, which is not classically used inside. It gives it that beautiful undertone of a smokiness where you're trying to like mysteriously find out where is this coming from. The sesame seeds, a lot of them. I like the crunch and that light toasted sesame flavor that goes through the actual dish. White pepper, about a teaspoon of it. It adds great value to the dish entirely. And then just a bit of sea salt. Lastly, lots of lemon. And then olive oil. Don't be shy with olive oil as well. We are cooking Mediterranean food. <laughs> and then just gently mix it together. You mind passing that bowl to me, please? Not at all. This is exactly what you're looking for. To test it out and see that you're on the right track, you can smell that zestiness. It's very important to use a good olive oil. I mean, Mediterranean cooking, most of it is all based around a really good olive oil. And you want to get that sort of grassy smell from your olive oil. That would be a good sign. You know when you're a kid and you rolled in the grass and the deep smell of it, Yay. freshly cut grass, that's what you're looking for. And then we just plate it up. So easy. I never taste. Yes. You don't have to ever ask me that twice. Wow. <laughs> Dion, the first thing I noticed was the olive oil and how fresh and crunchy it is. Are these textures? Lemon comes through, you get a bit of that sesame seeds, the crunch, that onion that's been salted, it comes through predominantly as well. The green onion and all those herbs are just screaming at you. And who said salads have to be boring? No, not at all. Where next are we travelling on our journey of taste? Next we're going over to the Greek islands and somewhere around Turkey and so forth to bring some of their flavours together. Awesome stuff. So what we have over here is a beautiful piece of lamb neck. What I've done with the lamb neck is I've added a little bit of white pepper, a teaspoon each of everything, cumin, a bit of ground coriander and some allspice and I've sort of rubbed that around the entire piece of neck and I've left it overnight to sit. 
and they sit for about 24 hours and then those flavors sort of seep into the fat of the lamb, which is very important because the next step is sort of going to take a lot of flavor from the top or outer layer of the neck when we're cooking it and we want all of the spices to have penetrated inside of the actual lamb before that. So I got 750 grams of salt over here and 500 grams of yogurt over here. You literally just want to combine the two together until you get to the right consistency. So always add a little bit at a time because if you add too much, you can't really take, take it, it out. out. Okay, once you have this sort of wet sea sand consistency, then you literally just want to cover the entire piece of neck. I've never seen this. I've never imagined this. I just recently thought of using the yogurt because I always use water and salt to make the actual crust. And I was like, oh, think about Greek cooking and Mediterranean cooking. And this idea of when we marinate biryani and so forth, it's sort of the bacteria and enzymes in the yogurt penetrate through the actual piece of meat. And you can look at it through a heat detector and you'll see how it actually penetrates all the way through to the center of it. So it's the best thing to use for marinade. So I was like, I'm going to be cooking the thing for 12 hours at 90 degrees. So imagine it cooking while it's sort of like penetrating through the piece of meat. So I'm going to get all those salts that's mixed through with the yogurt inside of that meat. It might seem like it's a little bit wet in the beginning. Don't be afraid of it. Don't add more salt. Just sort of work with it in this texture and try to get it all around. Because once you start cooking it, the salt's harden up. Okay. And the yogurt sort of drops to the inside of the lamb. Huh. And then you have this beautiful crust around it. Turns into this rock hard consistency. So once you have all of your yogurt and salt mixture done, is to pop it into the oven. I usually put it at 90 degrees for 12 hours in the oven. So you can easily prepare this on a Friday, start seasoning it up with all of your spices and play around with the spices. Whatever you'd like to eat with lamb, put it in. You want to put some mint in there, you want to put rosemary and garlic, do as you please. Because that's just the flavor at the end of the day. Due to it being such a lengthy process, I mean, cooking 12 hours, I've decided to make one in advance. Would you mind passing it over there, please? So I didn't know what this was when I saw it. There we go. It did look quite weird. It is the actual lamb, believe it or not, encased into the sort of salt crust. Shall we open this, baby? Yes, yes. So I usually use my sharpening steel. If you've got a little small mallet, it could work as well, or the back of a spoon. But at times, the crust is really, really hard. You just want to gently scrape all of the salt off. Can you smell those flavors? Those huh? aromas have just caught me in the nose and I, I just want to leave with this piece of meat. <laughs> There's a plate behind you. Would you mind passing it, please? And we gently pick it up. And now we just got to like sort of open it up and pull the bones out. And then you're just left with clean, lean lamb flesh. This is falling apart. My mouth is watering so much. We're going to go on to seasoning the actual rocket. Just a little bit of paprika, touch of white pepper, and then a good amount of salt. From olive oil, liberally. Very generous. We like the grassy flavor. <laughs> and then just to mix it up a little bit. Once your leaves are dressed, and it's literally just to start the assembling process. We're going to take our pita. I've taken the pita bread and I've just put them on top of a grill. I just grilled it very harshly so it sort of puffs up lightly. It opens the inside of it. I'm going to start with some of the hummus. Very little bit at the base of each side. I'm going to take some of the brinjal paste. I've added a lot of slow roasted tomatoes to it and lots of roasted garlic as well, so it's a bit different. And then we've made a tzatziki with some grated cucumber. I've added lots of fresh mint to it, some grated fresh garlic that I've tempered in a bit of lemon juice to take that harshness out of the lemon. I want to put a nice amount of this here on the other side. At this point, we want to stuff it with our rocket. Not too much, the lamb is the star of the show. And then we want to get our beautiful lamb out. Try to pull them, but not to pull them into small pieces. You want actual chunks of it in. And now, what I want to do is just add a bit of the olive, caper, and pickled onion right on top of it. So every bite that you're going to get is going to start off different. with this. Yeah. And then just a bit of tahini on top of it. But also, if you've noted, everything's layered. So in every bite, you're going to get a bit of everything. And that would be your pita. Thank you. I'm so happy right now. I can imagine us in Greece with the sun and the beach, these flavors. Okay, but now we actually have to have dessert. Oh yeah, of course, let's do that. Where are we whisking off to for dessert? We're going all the way to Italy, but it's with a twist. So the dessert time. We're going to make something a bit unusual. It's a traditional kind of Italian dessert. Use a nice fresh ricotta that's freshly made. I usually put a little bit of lemon on and sweeten it lightly with a touch of honey, sugar, a touch of vanilla in essence inside. I've just twisted it completely on its head. I've uh, made my own fresh ricotta. When I make my mozzarella, then I use the whey 
to sort of make a second batch or get a good batch of ricotta out of that. To start the actual dessert, what we're gonna do is, I've got 100 grams of fresh cream, I've added a teaspoon of vanilla essence and just a touch of caster sugar to lightly sweeten it. I don't want it sweet at all. And I just wanna whisk this up. You always wanna whisk it like you're drawing an eight. Take how quick it's whisking up. I have been whisking incorrectly my <laughs> entire life. And you can see it lightly firming up already. Stop just before it starts stiffening up. And you get like uh -huh. pieces that sort Great. of fall. Okay. That's perfect. At this point, you want to start with your honey. So I'll just use a pellet knife. Just a little bit of honey. We want to add some of the lemon zest. It's important that the lemon zest is freshly zested just as it goes into the cream because you get that fresh, fresh lemon that's locked into the actual whipped cream. On the fine side of your grater, just in one motion. You don't want to take the white bits because okay. that's very bitter. So once we get to this stage, you just want to lightly incorporate the lemon and the honey so that your honey is kind of evenly distributed. I'm very gently folding it in because I don't want to break the air pockets that we've created. Okay. For the ricotta, it's going to ruffle a little bit in there. I'd say almost one to one ricotta and cream. But again, this dessert's very simple. You can play around with it. You can add more ingredients to it if you'd like. You can put more cream if you want it more fluffier. At this point, we just want to fold it through. You want to just do it very gently so you get a little burst of ricotta popped in between these air pockets of light, fluffy cloud of I love the way you speak about food. Touch of salt, not too much. A little bit of black pepper. Now to plate up your dessert, you want to get this light, fluffy ricotta to set the center. Be careful not to knock out the air pockets. For the dates, the dates is pretty special because it's got a South African twist to it. I've taken your syrup that you traditionally use with your cook sisters, your cinnamon, the star anise. So I'm gonna pop one or two dates on top with a touch of that syrup coming through. To finish it off, lots and lots of roasted almonds. And you don't want to be shy with this, just put as much as you can on top. Just to finish it off, a little bit more lemon zest and a little bit more black pepper. Voila! Bellissima. Should we taste it? <laughs> wow. You have chills. That's insane. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Dion, grazie, grazie, grazie. You're welcome. And ciao, bella. Ciao.